Good morning, friends. I'm so glad to see you this morning. My name is Megan Otto, and I am the campus minister here at University United Methodist Church. Wherever you're from, whatever your journey, know that you are welcome in this place together. This Sunday, we are highlighting some of our campus ministries. Um, we will have some students in the worship service that you'll see a little bit later, sharing some of our prayers and our scripture. We will continue to have campus ministry this fall um, from a distance. We will have some studies, some Bible studies, some book studies, some fun activities, some learning time, and just time to connect. I hope that you will be in prayer for our college students and for all those folks that work on the campus of UT. I know that it's a very stressful time for all educators, for all students, and we just want to make sure that they feel our support as they are our neighbors. Uh, our coffee in the Zoom yard this past Sunday was a huge success. We had 40 households participate in about a 30 minute conversation with Pastor John and Pastor Lisa and some of our new members. It was great to see everyone. We'll do it again on August 30th, so be looking out for that information. We have a unique learning opportunity from moments, from moments to movements, the time for right racial justice, facilitated by Reverend Ray Jordan. The six-week course is designed to investigate the legacy of the past, understand the effects of that legacy on today, and seek paths of moving forward together. Discussion dates are Tuesday evenings, September 8th through October 13th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. The study is limited to 40 people and the cost is $20 a person. You can register on our website under coming events. I hope that you feel connected to this community. I hope you are ready to worship and I hope that you know that you are welcome here. Peace be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace be with, with, you. with you. And also with you. Good morning. My name is Sarah Kate Scribner, and I'm a fourth year student at UT in journalism. Please join me in prayer. God of love and justice, we gather together to worship you, to offer our thanks and praise, and to proclaim your goodness and mercy. Meet us here. Breathe your word into our souls, engrave your covenant of love upon our hearts. Teach us faithfulness and compassion so that our lives may reflect your love and justice to the world. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. in the morning when the world was begun and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth at Bethlehem I had my birth dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance said he I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. For holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stood ripped and they hung me high and left me there on a cross to die. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you. All in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday and the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. 
They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still go on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Me down and I left up high. I am the life that will never ever die. I'll live in you if you live in me. And the Lord of the dance said, He dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance said, He and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you. All in the dance said he. Hi, I'm Will Alexander. I'm a PhD student in the Transportation Engineering program at UT. Today's scripture comes from the 33rd chapter of Jeremiah, verses 10 and 11. Thus says Yahweh, You say of this place, It is a waste without human beings or animals. In the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without inhabitants, human or animal, there shall once more be heard the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voices of those who sing as they bring thank offerings to the temple. Give thanks to Yahweh Almighty, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. I will restore the fortunes of the land as at first, says Yahweh, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The grace, mercy, and peace of the triune God be with you all. Amen. Over the next three weeks, we're going to be talking about the pandemic in relation to our faith. We won't be talking about the science, although for anyone who just tuned in for the first time, United Methodists and University United Methodist Church are solidly on the side of paying close attention to science. We won't be talking about wearing masks, although I have found that one's use or non-use of a mask pretty much unmasks one's real theology. You might be wondering, why spend time and energy on this when we are preoccupied with so many things, with daily survival, with fears about friends and family, everybody working and learning at home, huge anxiety about school and, and college reopenings, and a, and a general foreboding sense that we may not even have seen the worst of this virus. And each one of us has a story. Our daughter is a travel nurse on Maui, and there was a large COVID outbreak at her hospital. It's the only hospital on the island. And so we had several nail-biting nights as we awaited her test results until we received the good news that she tested negative. So, why sit back and reflect on all of this? I think the answer is really pretty simple. We linger here on, on understanding how our faith speaks to us in this time because all of us are already doing it. Yes, we get caught up in the now of the trauma, but we are also ranging freely beyond that to ponder about where God is in all this and what are we being called to be and to do. You know, it's kind of interesting and a little bit frightening to skim over some of the responses that Christians have made to the pandemic. That somehow this is God's will to teach us a lesson to bring us to repentance. Now, unless morality no longer applies to God, this answer seems just painfully and horribly inadequate. Yes, it, it makes a kind of bizarre sense of the world and that everything is in God's hands, but it does that at the expense of creating a monstrous God who can manipulate the created order to unleash all manner of, of horrors. Frankly, I think that we all would be better off without that God. 
Some others see this pandemic as a sign that the end times are near. Well, many of us are hoping that there are some things that are going to come to an end soon, but an end time dished out by a judgmental God is probably not one of them. Now, one itchy problem we have to recognize with these responses is that you can actually find chapter and verse in the Bible to support them. I don't have time to parse out a, a complete answer here, but to su suffice it to say that we can pull stories and verses out of context, out of the Bible, to prove almost anything. But if we actually read the Bible, key point, we know that the larger arc of the biblical narrative is toward a God of love, mercy, and compassion. And so texts here and there about a God who, who fires lightning bolts like Zeus must be read with the greatest care and cannot easily be transferred and, and applied to our time. So, how about we look instead at a time when Israel was going through a major crisis? And right there, I think we may find something to hang our theological hats on. During the horrific siege and invasion of Israel in the seventh century, the prophet Jeremiah is at work. Looking around Jerusalem, he takes note that no one in the city is gathering in groups larger than 10. In fact, no one is gathering at all. In several places, Jeremiah says that the mirth and gladness, feasting and banquets, all of this has ended because the land has become a ruin, a wasteland. In the brief passage we read from Jeremiah this morning, the prophet is anticipating that even in this place of devastation, there will once again be heard the sound of celebration in the streets the voice of gladness, the voices of, of those who sing as they bring thank offerings to the temple. And Jeremiah goes on to say that the restoration of Israel will not be simply a return to the good old days or a return to those oppressive regimes of the past. God's restoration, God's restoration will bring something new. And as Walter Brueggemann reminds us, that newness can only be rendered in song and parable, two of the great trusts of the church, right? Why? Because what is new is something that doesn't fit easily into the categories or explanations of the past. This may be why I found myself using poetry more often in my sermons of late. Well, as we await this new thing, we want to know what to do. I mean, we are Methodists, for goodness sake. And we are not satisfied that we are saved by grace alone. And so we work, and we work at our salvation. And we want to know, beyond giving to charities and all, what does our faith call us to do? Well, Jeremiah's sermons during this time really provide a unique guide. The first thing is, is in the text that we read today. We engage in a relentless, uncompromising hope. Now, this is not a kind of naive optimism that we'll get through this. Naive optimism pretends that things aren't really all that bad. Shoulders back, chin up, it's all good, everything's going to be okay. What we find in Jeremiah and the other Hebrew prophets is, uh, of this time is a radical hope that does not sugarcoat, but that leans into the devastation, leans into the ruin of their time. It's a hope grounded in the conviction that God is not through with us yet, that God will not stop working God's purposes out until God has arrived at God's purposes. Debbie Thomas, a Christian educator and a wonderful writer, talks openly about a 
a tender time that she went through with her son following an accident. And in the beginning, she writes, her hope was frantic. It was focused on results, on miracles, basically on magic. But now, two years into his long recovery, hope has changed. She still prays for her son, but her prayers are quieter, softer, deeper. Her hope is free from expectations and it's grounded in tiny seeds that she observes, seeds sown of love, courage, friendship, and, and solidarity. Hope for her has become embracing the unknown, radical hope. It's not something that you just conjure up, but something that you practice. It's a stance that you take every single day. Radical hope is defiant. It looks reality in the face and refuses to give in or give up because God is still at work. She is still writing the story. Radical hope doesn't minimize how tragic and, and devastating the pandemic has been for so many. And yet it does bear witness to something more to the reality that what we maybe thought was a, a barren wilderness, a place of no hope, is grace-filled. Dinosaur parades. The uncanny, unexpected kindness of neighbors. The newfound respect for those who really do the essential work. And as an aside, may that respect be followed by a living wage for them. Can I get an amen? Power and water companies shutting off notices. Countless folks continuing to pay those who, who cut their hair or clean their homes or mow their lawns or dozens of other services who are unable to work the folks who made music out on their balconies, including the man who powerfully sang Nesun Dorma, Nesun Dorma, who picks up his son toward the end only to have him cover his ears as only a child would do. The one who adorned our church oak trees with beautiful banners of love. Who knew? Who expected all of this grace? Who could have predicted that this would happen? And yet this is our role as, as church to point, to bear witness, to be a part of creating this goodness, to choose hope every day. And all of this leads into a second task for us to be witnesses to the compassion of God. Jeremiah and the other prophets use the word chesed, which is often translated as compassion, but according to Brueggemann is best translated as the tenacious solidarity of God with us. Sit with that for a moment, will you? The tenacious solidarity of God with you. I don't know about you, but this is what I need right now. A God who never checks out. A God who will never head to the door. A God who will never pick up her cell phone and take somebody else's call. A God who will not find that there are other things to do, but who is in solidarity with me and with you in whatever we must face. Emmanuel, God with us, not just a, a Christmas promise, but a reality, a year-long reality. This is the God I need because I really can't do this tenacious solidarity thing. I try, but I fail so often. So I used to think that God with us was really no big deal. It's just, it's kind of God's thing. I mean, this is who God is. It's maybe kind of a minor superpower or maybe it's not even a superpower at all. 
But now, <laughs> this is more power than I can imagine to stay with us through all of this, to hold each one of us and all the pain and, and agony of the world and, and never to lose faith in us, never to become bitter, never to get contrary, but ever faithful, ever true, whose compassions, as the hymn sings it, fail not. Pastor Martin Rinkert served during the Thirty Years' War back in the early 17th century. His parish was in Ellenburg, Germany, and it was a refuge for many people who were fleeing war and famine and pestilence. It was a walled city. And at one point, he was finally the only clergy left in town. And he was often performing 40 or 50 funerals a day. Well, one day a pandemic swept through their town. He survived, but his wife died. While all of this is going on, he wrote a table grace for his family who remained. We're going to sing it this morning. Now thank we all our God. Now thank we all our God who wondrous things hath done, hath blessed us, on our way, this bounteous God be near us. Free us from all ills in this world and the next. My friends, who writes words of thanksgiving in the midst of unrelenting death? Only one who is filled with unrelenting radical hope only one who knows, who knows that the virus is not the end and that even its lethal force is outflanked by the grace and the goodness of God. May such hope be sown into all of our days through Christ. Amen. gifts, your tithes, and yourselves to God. We so appreciate your gifts, especially in this difficult time. So many places to give, so many things to support, and yet you're giving your gifts here so that, so that open, open Door can be this place of love, compassion, and hospitality 
I was there this last week and I mentioned in e-notes that there were angels everywhere, angels who came to visit us, angels who were there, who were serving. And your gifts, your work, make all of that possible. Thanks be to God and thank you. Amen. University United Methodist Church. It is a privilege and a pleasure to be with Sarah Sloan today. She has found her way to University Church. Uh, she began her journey in Sherman, Texas, and her faith journey has taken her many places, and she has now found this to be the home for her next stage in her journey. We, Sarah, we are so glad to have you with us today. Thank you. Sarah, after careful thought and prayer, you have decided to join this community of faith to be an active part of a church committed to mission and justice in the heart of Austin. And so I ask you before your new church family, will you support this community of faith with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, you say, I will. I will. Members of University United Methodist Church, each of us has an important role to fulfill. We recognize that Sarah needs a community of love and forgiveness as she finds her unique calling and lives out her faith and serves God. Will you work and pray that Sarah may find connection, care, support, and challenge through our faith community? If so, we say we will. Let us pray. Holy God, Help, and help us surround Sarah with a community of love and forgiveness. Strengthen us, 
as we renew our covenant to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Sarah, we welcome you to University United Methodist Church. We hope that this is a place where you find true connection and community. Thank you for joining with us today. Thank you. I look forward to spending time with you all in person someday. Me too. <laughs> receive these words of benediction and blessing. And then after the amen, stay tuned for a lovely word from one of our college students. May the spirit of the living God go before you to show you the way, go above you to watch over you, go behind you to push you into those places where maybe you'd rather not go, go beneath you to uphold you and uplift you. Go beside you to be your strong and constant companion and dwell within you to remind you that you are surely never alone and that you are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing burn brightly upon you and within you now and forever. Amen. I just graduated from UT and actually will be starting my first year of graduate school at the Steve Hicks School of Social Work. 
I've always really loved sharing joys in this community, and I have one for you today. I just received my internship for this first year, and I will be working in Cap City Kids. Um, I, I think my role will be supporting the students um, in this stressful time we're all having. I've always wanted to be a school social worker, and so I'm really excited to take my first steps towards that goal. Thank you.